Hello everyone, and welcome to DevWave Diaries. Here, we dive into the latest web development trends and coding techniques. If you're passionate about tech and eager to learn, you're in the right place. Today I am going to show you how to create this eye-catching mouse click animation using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. First, we'll create a script tag in our HTML document. Next, we'll use JavaScript to select the body element of the page. We do this by writing const body equals document dot query selector, body. This code selects the body element and assigns it to a variable named body, allowing us to manipulate it later. Next, we'll add an event listener to the body element. We achieve this by writing body dot add event listener, click, then write a function with parameter event. This code sets up an event listener for clicks on the body element. When a click happens, the code inside the parentheses will run. After setting up the event listener, we'll create a loop to generate multiple elements. Specifically, we'll use a for loop to run from i equals 0 to i equals 50. Inside this loop, we'll create a new element using let spark equals document dot create element, i. This line of code creates an i a tag each time the loop runs. Since the loop runs 50 times, it will create a total of 50 i a tags. Next, we'll style each spark element. To position the spark correctly, we'll set its top style property. We do this by writing spark.style.top equals event.client y minus body dot offset top plus px. This code sets the top position of the spark relative to the click event's vertical coordinate. Event.client y gives us the y coordinate of the mouse click and body.offset top adjusts this value to account for any vertical offset of the body element. Adding px ensures the value is in pixels, which is the unit used for positioning. To style the left side of the spark, copy paste this line and change. Offset top to offset left, client y to client x and style.top to style.left. This will gives us the x coordinate of the mouse cursor position. Let's create some random value for the x coordinate. We do this by writing let random x equals math.random minus 0.5 multiply window.inner width slash 1.5. Math.random generates a random number between 0 and 1. Subtracting 0.5 shifts this range to between minus 0.5 and 0.5. Multiplying by window.inner width slash 1.5 scales it to a suitable range for our sparks position. Now copy and paste this line to create a random value for the y coordinate as well. Change window.inner width to window.inner height and random x to random y. Next, we'll create a variable for the spark element to use later in our CSS. We'll do this by writing spark.style.set property, random x, random x plus, px. This line of code sets a custom CSS property named random x for the spark element. This custom property can now be used in our CSS to style the spark element. Now copy and paste this line to create a random y coordinate variable as well. Change random x to random y and change name to random x to random y. Now, let's create a random size for each spark element. We'll do this by writing let random size equals math.random, multiply 30 plus 2. This line generates a random number between 2 and 32. Next, we'll set the width of the spark element using spark.style.width equals random size plus px. This ensures that the spark has a size based on the random size variable, both in width and height. Now copy and paste this line to set the height value also. Change, width to height. This will give us some random size, i tags that we will style later using CSS. Finally, we'll add each spark element to the body of the document. We do this by writing body.appendchild, spark. This line of code appends the spark element to the body, making it part of the document and visible on the page. Let's start by adding some basic CSS to set up our page. We begin by applying a general rule to all elements, setting their margin and padding to zero. This removes any default spacing around elements. We also set the box sizing property to border box, which ensures that padding and borders are included in the element's total width and height. Set front family to sans serif. Next, we'll add styles to the body element. We set the display to flex to enable flexible box layout. We use justify content center to horizontally center the content and align items center to vertically center it. We also set the minimum height to 100 viewport height units to ensure the body takes up the full height of the viewport. The background color is set to a dark shade, number 222, for contrast, and we apply overflow, hidden, to prevent any scroll bars from appearing. Finally, we'll style the eye tags. We set their position to fixed so they stay in the same place even when the page is scrolled. We also use pointer events, none, to ensure they don't interfere with mouse interactions. The width and height are set to 50 pixels, and border radius, 50%, makes them appear as circles. We give them a white background color for visibility. Open the browser and click anywhere on the page. You should see white marks appearing at the click locations. These marks are the 50 i tags we created. Now, open the browser's inspect tool. This will allow you to view and interact with the page's HTML and CSS. Refresh the page and click anywhere again. You should see that 50 i tags are created at the click locations. Each click generates a new set of spark elements, demonstrating that our code is working as expected and adding the i tags to the page. Next, we'll add an animation to the i tags using at keyframes. Start by defining the at keyframes rule named anime. For the 0% keyframe, set the opacity to 1 and apply a transform with translate, minus 50%, minus 50%. This centers the element and makes it fully visible. For the 100% keyframe, set the opacity to 0 and adjust the transform to move the element. Use the previously created variables, random x and random y with var, random x, and var, random y, to position the element. 
Using translate, var, random x, var, random y, this will animate the sparks, making them fade out and move as they appear. To apply the animation using JavaScript, we'll start by creating a random duration for each spark. We do this with let duration equals math.random, multiply 2 plus 0.5, which generates a random duration between 0.5 and 2.5 seconds. Next, we add the animation to the spark element using spark.style.animation. We use backticks to include the animation name and duration in the string. The final code will be spark.style.animation equals animate duration s ease out forwards. This applies the animate animation to the spark element with the randomly determined duration, easing out as it completes, and ensuring the animation's final state is maintained. Open the browser and click anywhere on the page. You should see a beautiful set of circles appear at each click spot. These circles spread out with varying durations, creating a dynamic effect. After a short time, the circles will gradually vanish, completing the animation. Now, open the inspect window and observe that. Each time you click, 50 i tags are created. These tags vanish due to the animation, but they are not actually removed from the DOM. To resolve this, we need to add a JavaScript function to delete these i tags after the animation completes. This will ensure that the tags are properly removed from the document and do not accumulate with each click. To ensure the i tags are removed after the animation, we'll use set timeout. Set the timeout to 2000 milliseconds, or 2 seconds. Inside the timeout function, use spark.remove to remove the spark element from the DOM after the specified time. This ensures that each spark is deleted 2 seconds after being added, preventing them from lingering in the document. Open the browser and access the inspect window. Click anywhere on the page, and you'll initially see the creation of several i tags. After 2 seconds, all these tags will be removed from the DOM. This confirms that the set timeout function is correctly removing the tags after the animation completes. To add color to the circles, we first create an array named colors. Inside this array, include a selection of colors that you want the circles to display. For example, you can add colors like red, blue, green, and yellow. This array will be used to randomly assign colors to each spark element, enhancing the visual effect. To select a color randomly, create a variable named random color. Use the code let random color equals colors, math.floor, math.random, multiply colors.length. This line picks a random color from the colors array. Then, apply this color to each spark element by setting spark.style.background equals random color. This ensures each spark gets a randomly chosen color from your array. Open the browser and click anywhere on the page. You'll see random circles with different colors appear at the click points. Each circle is generated with a randomly chosen color from your array. After a short time, the circles will disappear, demonstrating the complete effect with varying colors and animations. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. Your support helps us create more exciting and valuable videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode of DevWave Diaries.